Well, hi, well, welcome back to the channel. Well, we're back in Albania, but I have to say, when we first came into Albania, I was disappointed. I'd put it on such a pedestal, and neither of us were feeling it. But how wrong were we? Well, we've got a gorgeous morning yet again, but today it's all about getting into Albania. Again. Again. Okay, first up this morning, some fuel and some water. So diesel in Greece is actually fairly expensive. It's about 184 uh, for normal diesel. It's a bit more if you want the premium diesel. Uh, but we're hoping to get some water here as well. So I'm only going to put 50 euros in because fuel is actually cheaper in Albania. So this is really handy today. We've obviously stopped for some fuel. Uh, the water supply in Greece is actually really good. It's potable throughout the country. Um, there's some really good pressure here, so it makes sense before we go into Albania, where the water quality isn't always brilliant. Okay, so we're just approaching the border crossing. Uh, it said there's a queue, so let's see. Well, it's not too bad actually. There's probably about seven or eight cars in front of us, but uh, I have to say, there isn't much happening. So we're just at the border crossing leaving Greece into Albania and if I was travelling on my own on my British passport I'd have a problem because I've overstayed the 90 in 180 days Schengen rule uh, by about 10 days. Um, but because I'm married to Phil and he's got an Irish passport, it's the only reason I'm married to him, um, means that I um, can travel under a particular EU piece of legislation called, um, and now I've got to try and find it, I can't remember what it's called actually, but we'll put it at the bottom. That basically means I can travel um, with Phil uh, as his wife uh, or common law spouse um, as part of his right, right to a family life. So I have the legislation printed in Greek, uh, in Fra French, in Spanish, in all the languages, ready to present to them uh, should they decide to argue with me. And they'll get a shot. Because I can't be argued with. Obviously I'm a woman, I'm right all the time. Um, so let's see how it goes. Right, she said it now. That's it, we're doomed. <laughs> you can't argue with border control. Of course you can't. But they can't argue with a written document. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly why we have it printed out, hard copy, in every language. Well, that was straightforward. No problem coming out of Greece. Um, the guy could obviously see we were travelling together. I didn't need to show him any documentation other than my passport and he stamped it and off we went. Two minutes. Okay, next up, Albania border crossing. I hope we don't have a problem with buying insurance here because it's a Sunday. Okay, well, we made it through. They let us out of Greece uh, without a problem and um, they let us into Albania without a problem. Uh, they didn't ask us about insurance as we're coming into Albania for the truck, so we, we had to stop. There's a little sort of row of shops and offices and things just after the border. Um, and we got uh, 15 days of insurance for the truck for 49 euros. Uh, I don't think they had the capacity to take a card, so luckily we still had lots of euros from our last uh, from Greece. Um, and then we bought a 15 day SIM card from Vodafone for 40 gig for 28 euros. Um, so we're all set now for Albania and we're on the way to the Blue Eye, uh, which we're really looking forward to. We park up, pay the 50 leg entrance fee and take the short walk to the Blue Eye. That's gorgeous. Color that water is incredible. It is really crystal clear. So even though it says no swimming, everyone's in swimming. And jumping off the bridges.
Well, I think we've got really lucky here actually. It's early October, the sunshine, and it's absolutely gorgeous. There isn't too many people about. And I really like this, um, much more than the one in the north. Uh, at least it's a natural spring, and it's crystal clear. I mean, it's, you can see the color of the water. It's got this lovely aqua blue tinge to it. Yeah, nice. Okay, Is, how was that? Yeah, it was really good. Much better than I thought it was going to be, actually. The colour of the water is just every blue and green you can imagine all sort of woven together. And I wish I'd have put my swimmers on, I would have gone in. No, you wouldn't. I would. And it's pretty cold, though. Yeah, 10 degrees, it says. That's quite chilly. But yeah, yeah worth doing if you're in southern Albania, definitely. We find a quiet spot for the night before heading on the next morning. Okay, so we're just leaving the hills and that was a great little stop, but we're heading up to a place called Gyrocaster, which is meant to be lovely. And we know there's a castle there, which is meant to be pretty impressive. So we're going to try and get up to the castle. Uh, I don't think we can get the truck up there, so we'll sort of park in the lowlands, probably get, get the scooter off and uh, go for a little explore. But right now, I'm just trying to avoid the trees, the trees, the trees trees and the cars. Well, I would definitely recommend if you're in this part of Albania, definitely come and visit the Gyrocasta Castle because it's so impressive. And the landscape around here is absolutely gorgeous. But the building itself is just vast and it's uh, it's not expensive to get in. I think it's about three pounds fifty to get in. Yeah. Is that right? About yeah. that each. Uh, but honestly, it's I know it's a load of old stones, but it's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, forget health and safety. I mean, you can access pretty much the whole area, including the roof where we are now. There's no handrails, there's no signage, there's nothing. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, down to the individual, be careful, make sure you don't fall off. Look at this. Gyrocaster, which was a really interesting place actually, I'm glad we went. And we're on the way to the hot springs at Benye now, which I'm particularly looking forward to. Uh, and we've got this fantastic mountain scenery and we're following a, a really gorgeous river all the way. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting there. I think we're going to try and stay overnight. In rural Albania, the roads are quiet, although watch out for animals on the road, and it always takes longer to get from A to B than you think. Well, we're only about 10 minutes from our overnight destination, uh, which is close to the, to the little thermal pool. And there's a gorgeous stone bridge there as well. So we're definitely looking forward to getting there. It's five to five in the evening. Um, we set off pretty much first thing this morning. So it's been a long day on the road. It's been a good day. The scenery has been absolutely stunning. And a little stop in Gyrocaster was really, really good. So uh, last couple of Twist the bendy roads and uh, we're there. Well, we got here eventually. You can see we're losing the light. We've just taken a walk up there, actually. You've got the bridge and the pool, and there's a second pool a bit further along. It's a really lovely spot, but actually, it's really, really busy. I mean, it is October. Um, 
but you know the weather's good so clearly you know lots of people still coming there's a lot of vans here actually uh, people stopping overnight so uh, you can hear the burble of the water it's a really great little spot so why wouldn't you What a day, so we're actually having a little glass of white tonight. Oh well, yeah, not like us at all. No, but um, it's still gorgeous out there, so. It's still quite anyway, warm. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. What is it in here? It's still 24 and a half degrees in here. Mm. Well, morning guys, well what a fantastic morning we've got here. There isn't a cloud in the sky, it's absolutely glorious. The sun is just coming over the hill. I've just been getting the, the shoes, the Tevas, or sort of water sandals if you like. Alright, because I've got my swimmers on, and we're going to go for a little dip. Okay, first things first, we have a little cup of tea on the go. Izzy's got a banana on the go. A stringy banana. She needs some sustenance before we hit the hot tub. Well, of course. I'm a grown girl. <laughs> Don't you dare. So, uh... Yeah. Come on, hurry up and boss and get in the water. Mm. Diesel water heater's on. Oh. What? I always have to spit out the end of my banana and you're filming me doing it. <laughs> okay. People don't want to see that. Look, it's got black bits in the end of it. I hate those little stalky bits. That is exactly what people want to see. Ah! What? Ah! <laughs> oh, sorry, I can't eat that. <laughs> I hate stringy bananas that taste flowery that have black stalky things. Listen, no, you know what could it put up with. That's okay, horrible. say no more. Look! So is it just dug this out of the bin? Should he justify why she chucked it in the bin? It's probably a spider leg or something. I mean, look, I can hold it. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> He's very particular about bananas, is he? Phil always threatens that he's gonna. When I'm in a care home and I'm disabled and I can't move my arms, he's gonna feed me stringy bananas. I'm sure, that's a euphemism for something else. But <laughs> well, it's not stringy. I can tell you that. This will put us a bit cold. Okay, we've walked a bit further up the gorge. And there's a tiny pool here, but the water I'm stood in it right now is so warm, it's beautiful. Nobody about, so let's get in quick. So we just walked further up the, the gorge of the canyon, and there's loads of these little pools dotted about. As Izzy checking it out, they're all about the same temperature in fairness. But we're up in good time this morning, so there's no one else here, which is lovely. Are there any, if there are any frog experts out there, I've just seen a frog in this pool. And I'm really surprised that a frog can live in sulfur water. So if there's any amphibious experts out there, perhaps you could send us a message in the comments and let us know. Well, if you come to Albania, honestly, you've got to come here, walk up the canyon because it's really fascinating and actually it's really accessible. Wow, so we're probably about a K into the canyon it wasn't our intention to do this, but it's just so spectacular. There's nobody else around. I don't think we're going to get the opportunity to do this without other people here uh, ever again. So if you come here, get up early, come and do this because it's incredible. Well, I think this is as far as we're going to come. Uh, we're about only about 1200 meters into the canyon. I mean, it's slow going because obviously you're sort of picking your way through all the, the boulders, crossing the, the, the little sort of river. Uh, 
and in places you know there's oh there's not much of a flow which is quite nice it makes it a bit easier but uh, we've certainly got the measure of it it's been fantastic right just before we turn around we're at the, sort of the widest point I'm going to try and fly the drone I'm a bit reluctant to fly the drone because the last time I flew the drone in a canyon I lost it um, you just can't get the GPS signal because the the canyon walls and so when you stop flying it keeps moving because it's trying to, it's seeking for the GPS signal and uh, I hit a tree and it drowned and it was expensive I had to go cap in hand to um, the big boss and confess it wasn't a good day Okay, so yeah, I thought it might be the case, so I just can't get a signal at the moment, so I'm restricted in the height. Uh, it's only going to about 10 meters uh, because I can't locate the home point. So if you fly drones, you'll understand what that means, but uh, I'm certainly restricted, but I'll try and get something. Well, I know I'm talking to the drone right now, but basically what I'm saying is I can't get any elevation. It won't pick up the GPS signal and I'm restricted in how, fly, how high I can fly the drone. So a bit frustrating because it would make for incredible uh, drone footage. Right, we're on the way back. I managed to get a little bit of elevation with the drone, uh, so we'll see how that comes out. Not quite as much as I wanted, uh, but yeah, let's get back and have another cup of tea. Another one. 